I get concerned with an elevated HbA1c because it doesn't just infer that you've got insulin resistance. It infers that that insulin resistance has sort of deteriorated to a point where you're now having sugar damage in your tissues. To have an elevated HbA1c infers that you must have elevated blood sugar levels. So just to refresh on what HbA1c is, you've got blood sugar, you've got sugar circulating around in your blood, and you've got red blood cells there. The more sugar you have in your blood, the more sugar will attach to your red blood cells. And that's what's examined for this test. So as soon as your HbA1c is elevated, that's proof that you have elevated blood sugars. And clearly, as we've seen uh, from the glycation damage and the advanced glycosylated end products, that's leading to bad stuff. So So the, the ideal level should be below five. Is that what we're saying? Look, um, quite honestly, I I just like as low as it goes. One of the problems with HbA1c is that it's not a factor of the concentration of the blood sugar in isolation. It's also a factor of the lifespan of the red blood cells. And we think that if we improve the omega-3 index, we make the red blood cells more flexible and their lifespan, we suspect, actually increases. So that means you end up with an artificial increase in the HbA1c. So other conditions, something like alpha thalassemia is very, very common. Iron deficiency also is not uncommon, and that leads to a prolongation of the red blood cell lifespan. And in each of those conditions, you'll have an artificial elevation. So I tend to not rely solely on HbA1c as a target. If I'm concerned that it might be unreliable, I'll do another test, and that's called fructosamine. So that measures the amount of glucose or glycation that's happening to a protein called albumin. And we know the half-life of albumin in the blood is about 21 days. So we can reference those two together, and that gives us a pretty good picture of average blood sugar control. So I, I don't look at HbA1c in isolation because it does have issues. Very good test for a population, predicts risk very, very well. But in an individual, you have to take it with a grain of salt. So what would you say the top three tests one should have to ensure metabolic health? Omega-3 index, glucose tolerance, insulin response would be my top two. And if a lot of people have it, it's the LDL subfraction test. I personally, I think a triglyceride is absolutely fine because I can infer what your subfraction will be from the triglyceride, but people have a lot of concern about cholesterol, so we do the LDL subfraction. It would probably be the top three tests that people come looking for.